And the head coach of the Cal Bears joins us now on the show. Coach, we appreciate your time. Uh, Yogi is calling you Justin Wilcox 2.0. Do you feel any different as Justin <laughs> Wilcox 2.0? Oh, man. Um, maybe I need to go get a new haircut or something. I don't know. Um, no, it's an exciting time for us, certainly, with uh, some new faces, uh, re- new recruits and new staff members. And uh, it's a really exciting time here at Cal Football. And we're just glad to be back in the building working on football and getting ready for spring practice. All right, so a lot to ask you about, but I want to start on offense. You lose a guy that we all loved in Bull Baldwin. He goes to be a head coach at Cal Poly. In comes Bill Musgrave. What's the process like to find a coordinator? I know a lot of hot names were rumored for this job that I'm sure reached out to you to get this job. And then why did you eventually hire Coach Musgrave to be the guy? Yeah, um, all good points. And there was uh, some really good candidates out there that were interested. It's, um, you know, ultimately it's about the the fit. And uh, there's a lot to that, right? That's a, you know, one word, but it encompasses a lot. So uh, from a a football perspective, somebody that has, um, you know, the knowledge and the acumen, which Bill certainly does. I mean, he has been in so many uh, different systems. He's uh, called plays for a long time and uh, just a uh, really has a, a great, not only a great football IQ, but just one of the best teachers that, that is out there. And so uh, I had been talking to him a little bit and kind of gauging his interest in coming back to the college game. And, uh, you know, that along with just his personality and fitting in here at Cal with, our staff and the type of players we have in our program and uh, the location and all that and what, you know, how we're going to recruit and the type of players we're going to recruit, not only, you know, their off the field characteristics, but the, the style of play. And uh, so I think all those things kind of came together and it was, it was very obvious at that point. And so we're fortunate to have Bill and he's uh, been here about a month now and we're really diving into football and it's been fun to sit in there with the offense and, and uh, listen to those guys talk through things as it's going to be a uh, – there will be a shift um, in in some ways, and then you'll see some similar formations and play, plays as well. But there's uh, definitely going to be a little bit different uh, style of play. Um, and uh, everybody's excited to, to get out there and start practicing. You know, I think back to last year and, and uh, your spring game, and, and you were telling everybody that would listen, listen, Chase Garbers, this guy is – is he's first of all he's younger than you might think he is, and uh, he can be an explosive player for us. And we saw that come to fruition when he was able to start and play at least a half. Your record was fantastic. What is the next level for him? What do you think Bill Musgrave can do for him? Yeah, I think just continue on that trajectory, and I think he will chase a very uh, serious guy uh, about his craft, and he prepares really hard. He's uh, gotten himself into great uh, physical shape and. I thought you thought, saw through the first portion of the season, really, as we got down to Ole Miss, and uh, he was playing at a high level, uh, especially in that game, and then came back and started really fast um, against Arizona State, and then unfortunately had an injury, and then was able to come back from that. And Devon uh, did a heck of a job there, uh, kind of settling in and filling in for, for Chase and helped us get a win uh, against Wazoo, and then Chase was able to come back and finish the season strong. So uh, I'm just excited for him and the, all, all the other QBs to continue on that trajectory. And, uh, again, a little bit of – there'll be some adjustment in terms of language and verbiage, but those guys will pick it up well. I'm not concerned at all with that, and I'm excited for them to, to work with Bill. Yeah, our uh, colleague Roxy Bernstein, Justin Hill, texts us the same graphic all the time. Cal Bears, national champion, 7-0 and when Chase Garbers finishes a game. Uh, which we love because we want him to be healthy. But that being said, a big part of his health is up front, and you bring in Angus McClure. He's a guy who's known in all circles of football, but specifically on the West Coast for how he's recruited for a long time. What's it been like with him, and then how's the health of some of the old linemen that got banged up and you lost last season? Yep. Angus, uh, once Bill got here, Angus is one of the guys we brought in right away, and I've known Angus for a long time, and he's – coached uh, a number of years at different places and um, I've known him uh, and especially in the recruiting uh, part of it where he's just done such a, a great job but he's a really a fantastic football coach too and he had a chance to sit down with Bill and really uh, they had a lot of similar uh, background and training in, in uh, some of their West Coast offense and so uh, they hit it off and, and so we were able to, to get him hired and 
he'll, uh, you know, losing Bo and losing Coach Greatwood, who are awesome people and great coaches, um, that's just part of our business. But to be able to bring these guys in, uh, you know, a guy like Angus, who has a background on the West Coast, who has uh, coached in different systems and just, again, a great teacher and, and a really, really good human being. So it's been great. And now we got to get those guys back and healthy. And we were, we were banged up a little bit, but uh, Will Craig and Jenna Williams, some guys who were banged up, will be getting back involved with uh, spring football. And uh, not only that, but the, some of those younger guys that played a lot, Matt Sendrick and McCade, guys who are going to be taking the next step, you know, Mike Safel being healthy for a full year. I mean, I think uh, you'll see the difference in those guys just a uh, year of maturity and development. Uh, I know not a lot of work to be done today relative to the amount of uh, your class that was signed back in, in December. But when you think about what, what you wanted to address with this class, generally speaking, is there any, anything that stood out to you about it? Well, we t went uh, heavier numbers at receiver and DB, and that was just based on kind of where our roster was, and we liked the guys that we signed there. We felt like uh, we got we were full in both those areas in basically signing a starting secondary and a starting receiving core um, for the future. And those guys <clears throat> uh, have some ability, there's no doubt, and some of them are already on campus working hard. Uh, we're excited to bring them into the program uh, to the program and let them compete with the guys that are already here. Uh, we also signed uh, some some defensive linemen, some O-linemen um, who were, got really good size and uh, size potential. So that was another big part for us. But uh, really uh, pleased with how the class shaped up. I think we got some really good football players, got some smart guys uh, who love playing the game. And uh, ultimately, you know, time will tell because uh, there will be a transition for all of them. But we're sure excited uh, they signed. And like I said, seven or eight of them are already here working. Coach, uh, it's great to have you today. We look forward to uh, that haircut and uh, 2.0. <laughs> yeah, 2.0, man. That's a lot of pressure. i got to I got to figure something out. Upgraded. Uh, Justin, thanks so much. We appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, guys. See you. Justin Wilcox.